Speaking of which, I forgot to ask about your dear companion who was spending time with us. A thug? I was told oh. by one of my cohorts, my peers, that he was one of your ilk. Uh, ilk? Uh, he's my friend. He can be a bit frumpy at times, but I wouldn't really call him ilk. Um, yeah, wh- how, how did he get here? Oh, we couldn't get a word out of him overall. Frumpy I could see, but that man was stone cold silent. Honestly, it seemed like he was merely wandering the wilderness fighting our men. Oh gosh, oh, he was probably looking for me. Uh, I feel a little bad about that now. Uh, oh, perish the thought, of course. We put very little harm on him. He did quite a number on our forces, though. He's... For real? Unexpectedly powerful. Jeez! I, I mean, I knew he had the gun, but I didn't think that it'd be that strong. I... Well, good job, Thog. You're... Huh. Uh, well, I mean, not good job, but like... You notice um, the faintest hint of something in Jin's eyes as you say good job. I, I, I don't mean good job. Like, is everybody all right? Uh, as... Oh, darn it, Thog making work for me. If if anybody's hurt, I will... I, I can heal them as recompense. Um, he was looking for me when he hurt them, so it's kind of my fault. He lets out an airy chuckle. Oh, of course not. Our healers are amongst the best. That's why we brought him here. You have healers? Of course. Though, he did bear some old wounds that were beyond our capabilities of healing. I, yeah, he's got some pretty nasty scars on him. Uh, I think those are from his time in Alaran. Jin slowly shakes his head as if contemplating something. Regardless, I apologize. Perhaps if we'd let him out, you would have had an easier time with that brutish attacker that came into the city. The, the Zeth! Right! Oh my gods, I forgot about that. Uh, um, yeah, well, I don't know if we would have had an easier time so much. I, I'm honestly a little glad that Thog wasn't there for it. Uh, he's not much of a frontline type of fighter. Jin blinks as if a little taken aback. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what? Why were you holding him here? Well, after he took down so many of my men, most of them not fatally, Good. I was curious. That, and he seemed to be a foreigner. Perhaps he could help us out if he heard our cause. Uh? He could be the compassionate type. Um, I don't know about <laughs> compassion. Um, though I can guarantee you, if you make it worth his time, Thog will help you. That being said, we couldn't get him to communicate with us even when we offered him the greatest of gifts. Uh, oh, such as? Jin extends his palm. A brilliant, brilliant fruit begins to grow. Vines expanding outwards, wrapping, interweaving between his fingers. The most wow. exotic of fruits, of course. A brilliant tree, a beautiful flower. All that I was capable of offering. The beauty that I create with my movements. Uh, <laughs> Thog's not much one for beauty unless it makes him some money. Thog <laughs> likes coin. Uh, but, 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 but enough about Thog. Um, you mentioned the Zeth. Uh, you were... you knew about it? Oh, of course. Who could live in honor and during these times and not hear about the brutal attack? I mean, it, it, it like just happened, though. I guess, though, the city is kind of hidden in Honorant, so... Yes. And Horovan's got a... But, but you knew about the attack before Horovan came back. How? Je nods. Of course, I have my eyes and ears everywhere. There are those sympathetic to the spirit folk cause, but I am familiar with its kind. The Zet? What is it? That's actually something I'd been meaning to ask, and I don't... I don't remember if I asked that last night. He looks at you, eyes full of pity, yet smile somehow remaining. It's uh, quite the contradictory image. Ah, uh, yes, the Zeth. It's encouraging that you didn't in encounter the creature too closely. It's quite the difficult beast for, uh, well, individuals of our proportion to handle. Uh, I had a brush with its consciousness, I want to say. I got in pretty close. He nods slowly. What do you think of this theory that the humans have, the idea of a food chain. I think it makes sense. Well, if we were speaking in pure predatory senses, humanity stands above most things. However, there are those aberrations that exceed it, that they call monsters. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar. Uh, one of my friends is pretty, uh, he's, he's pretty quick to lecture about monsters. Now, on a higher plane, I'm speaking purely in a predatory sense. 
spirit folk have been established as the predator of humanity. So many of our really? less refined kin indulge in the consumption of human life. Uh, okay. Right. Unfortunately. Exceedingly uncivilized, of course, he shakes his head. I nod. But at the same time, we ourselves possess a predator. A creature that what? stands above us, capable of hunting us down, killing us, and destroying us absolutely. The humans have their solutions to kill a spirit folk to keep it down. The Zeth evolved to carry a solution. So, like, you mean the Zeth isn't a spirit? Everybody was calling it a spirit. Like, they, they seemed pretty- That's the traditional human understanding. Anything greater than themselves must be divine, spirit folk or otherwise. They took a look at anything greater and call it a god. But but it was summoning- it was using wisps. I, I thought- I was almost convinced that it was a spirit. That is our hunter. What followed us to this land. It's a creature capable of killing us utterly and absolutely. I'm sure you noticed its ability to mimic others. Yeah, yeah it- it was constantly copying what other people were doing. That talent ensures that a Zeth requires no army. It requires no support. It merely travels learning from those that it has encounters with. A Zeth that enters a battlefield fresh, prepared to learn, is capable of taking on the strengths of an entire army. One is generally enough to take down a city or a nation. You mean there's more of these things? Of course. They're a race of creature. What? Their numbers are uncertain, but they've hounded us since the beginning. But why is this the first time I'm hearing about them? They, like any good hunter, are patient. What? Where are they? A land to the far north, locked in snow, devoid of spirit folk entirely. What do they do? Do they have... do they have cities? Do they have... you said they don't need armies. I can't imagine what a city of Zeth would look like. Shin's eyes fog over for a moment. We, as a people, are... fractured. We have different thoughts, different opinions, different ways to... If it were easy enough, I'd gather all the spirit folk I could find and march them on that location, the sickening beasts, but... You would march against the Zeth, but wouldn't they just... Wouldn't they just tear through the spirits, and then... Humans... would you be marching the spirits to their death? Humans are one matter. A Zeth can break a simple human down with a, with a thought, with a glance. We spirit folk, it needs to actually put us down, reduce us to our most vulnerable of states. The Wisp, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But in such a condition, the Zeth can easily add us to its consciousness permanently. A section of spirit folk forever locked within that roiling mind of a thousand voices. <sighs> A death more permanent than the rest of this world would offer us. It doesn't sound like a death. It sounds like the spirit continues to exist. Trapped. We're unsure of what happens after a spirit is taken by the Zeth, but we know one thing. They are our most dangerous enemy. They sound like everybody's most dangerous enemy. And speaking of that, it was here for the seal. And you, I remember, have a vested interest in that seal. Why was it trying to break the same seal that you wish? Knowing what I've just told you, if you were the Zeth, why would you hunt down a particular pocket of spirit folk? To take them in? He nods. There are, bound to that seal, spirit folk of terrible and monstrous strength. Does that mean that more Zeth are going to come for it? Jin is seemingly caught off guard by this. He, uh, he actually starts for a moment. I hadn't... Considered that thought. It, yeah, it sounds like, uh, any Zeth getting its hands on that seal is bad news for everybody. Jin, this, this might be what you can use to unite, to unite with the humans. You have a common cause. Fighting the Zeth. If only it were that easy. <sighs> well, as you can tell, I, myself, um, I have mixed feelings about that seal. There's centuries of bad blood between myself and the humans of this land. Yeah? It's true that before the seal fell, my kind were guilty of a great many things. Right now, I wish nothing more than the acceptance of spirit folk. The seal is a secondary concern. He stares you directly in the eyes. Such a thing would require planning, coordination. The spirits trapped in there are full of hatred. 
malice for the humans that kept them trapped that trod upon their prison. If they were let loose now, they would wreak untold havoc on the country of Honorant. Is there anything we can do to... I, I hate to leave them trapped, but... But you're right. They don't sound like they're in a state where we can just let them out. Jin calmly nods, staring into the twisting, turning waters. I had something of an idea regarding that. I don't intend to crack open the seal to make the situation any worse for the people who live here. <sighs> okay. But at the same time, I can't countenance this this action continuing. I No, I, I agree. It's, it makes my stomach turn. If you would lend me your strength, I have the intention of doing something risky. Ridiculous, even. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time, I mumble. <laughs> <laughs> I want to break into the depths of that bloody rust clan. To shatter the induction method of the seal. To leave it intact, but to stop any further spirits from suffering. I, yes, no, yes. Uh, I, if I'm able to help in any way, I'd love to. In all honesty, thank you. Deeply, from the bottom of my heart. Of course. If you wish to call yourself such, I would gladly count you as one of the ban. I... 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 I think I will. With a very genuine smile, Jin extends his hand. Now, do you have a particular taste in mask? One day has passed in the city of Jinkala, yet our, uh, heroes have remained mostly stationary. They've retained their, uh, their, their incredibly firm guard post in the, uh, oh, yeah, in the inn. The truer purpose. <laughs> Indian is kicking back and relaxing. Marcus is reaching back behind the counter. Occasionally he slides a bottle down across the warped wood, making whooshing noises. He Whoosh. looks extremely cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just like that. I think I have the wrist motion down, guys. Gregor is sitting there working on his uh, most recent musical number. Everything is right with the world. <laughs> I really think that I could be a professional bartender if I pursued it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I really and he, do. And he turn, turns the page of Pally Dan's adventures. Uh-huh. Here, check this out. Like, imagine this... there's a... Sorry, I, I think you were talking about something pointless. I got this from my fucking book wow. club and it sucks. What is it? It's it's the adventures of Marcus Pally hops over the bar. It's an informative it's an informative adventure through the nature and look, he's making friends with all the spirit uh -huh. folk. Look at how wonderful yeah. that is. Oh, and sometimes they're deified. Look at oh, look at all the beautiful little cherubim. She slams the book shut. All lies. I mean, maybe it's not wise. Oh, it's maybe all entirely somebody is living lies. a charmed life. No, nobody it lives a charmed me, life. But, uh... and, yeah, in this crazy fucked up world, nobody lives a charmed <laughs> life. My charmed life well, is sure, sitting but here maybe, kicking wait, what's back. This guy's name? Pally Dan? What? D yeah, Pally Dan, right? <laughs> what a loser. Sometimes, right? when things are sad. <laughs> Both Indian and Marcus turn. <laughs> oh, don't mind us. Keep going, please. Oh, no, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're not interrupting anything. No. Marcus takes a seat. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you'd you'd come in and kind of... Sing the next line, but... Oh, right. Uh, so here, uh, start me off again. Sometimes when things are sad. Just drink a keer. And then so get bad. mad. <laughs> Son of a bitch, you stepped on my line. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Indian stares at Marcus. They passed the, they've gone through the past, uh, say, 12 hours or so, much in a similar fashion. The three surprisingly get along extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> Things are, you know, kind of oddly simple when the three of us hang out. Yeah, like, at the same time I was saying I didn't particularly lead a charmed life, and I think that's the case, because that, mm. that type of rosy phrasing just makes my fucking skin crawl. But at the same time, this is perfectly fine. It feels this very nice. quiet. Well, have you noticed how quiet not just we are, but the city is? Yeah, actually. Compared to how it was, yeah. You know, on fire, everyone screaming, yeah. Big, yeah. big difference. I, in fact, I noticed a lot of houses were empty. It's off-putting. So, it, real lots estate of houses the taking, are... you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Indian's face perks up. I like the way you think. <laughs> I like the way I think. <laughs> Gregor, do you like the way he thinks? What are you thinking about? Money. And squatting. <laughs> also squatting. Mostly squatting. I do squatting. love squats. <laughs> See, he loves squats. <laughs> it's subtle then. <laughs> Marcus stands up. Let's go, uh, let's go see what, uh, what we have for the tagging. 
or <laughs> squatting. Yeah, I mean, we got this nice bar. I mean, you guys already had a bar that you're already pretty much squatting in, but this one's nicer. Hey, that's and in the middle of a city. It is. Although... Really, if you put your mind to it, you can squat anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're on the same page right now. <laughs> I'm. Yeah, no, I didn't expect you to be so on board with this. Yeah, right? It's I'm... honestly, like, exciting. I've been trying to get you guys to squat forever. <laughs> I don't know about that, Gregor. I don't seem to recall any conversations of the sort, but, you know, let's not dwell on it. Whatever happened to the innkeeper here, by the way? Did he just disappear? What's up with that? He'd die in a corner somewhere? Uh, Inian sips one of the many, many lined-up drinks on the counter that Marcus has been making all day. Oh, be Most... careful with those. Those are incredibly strong. Those Most are meant to be diluted of... by a factor of a hundred. Most of them are, in fact, empty already. <laughs> she she begins to sip on and walks away. I, some questions are better left unanswered. Sometimes an empty bar is an empty bar, and therefore it's yours. Yeah. To squat point. in. To squat in. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Gregor. Here, here. He gets it. He gets it. Oh, man. <laughs> so, shall we? She throws the book into the corner, into the trash corner, with the <laughs> other trash. Sure. You guys go out first. I'm going to lock up. Marcus takes a chair, wedges it against the door, and then leaps out through the window. Any <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. furrows okay. are... Any furrows a brow. It's like my conscience just spoke up for a second. I think we're supposed to be guarding this place, which is hilarious well, in its own like, right. What the bar specifically, or just we're kind of we're in charge of the entire thing, right? Oh yeah, we are. We are in charge of the whole thing, which is still okay. hilarious to me. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, everything is nice and quiet. We're kind of we're kind kind of a big deal. A little <laughs> bit of a big deal. Well, most importantly, I want to guard this bookshop next. I would just love that to death. Yep. I'm just going to look around real fast to see if there's anything wrong. <laughs> mm hmm Uh-huh. Excuse me, citizens? Uh, any, uh, any general injustices or, uh, bad happenings going on you could use some, uh, help with? Anything at all? Um, this man points directly over. You see a, uh, you see a very distinct tent with a, uh, man sitting there with shrieking rats next to it. Right, uh-huh. They're really loud. Right, uh, I'm sorry, but I uh, have no right to interfere with the free market. <laughs> Marcus goes over to the bookshop. Uh, Indian peeks her head out the door. Did they want anything from us? Uh, no. Any trouble? <laughs> Any trouble Don't whatsoever? Think so. No, it looks like they're angry about the rats and their yells. Oh, did you tell but them about the free market? I did tell them about the free market. Yeah, no, as agents of the city, we have no right to interfere with that. Yeah, exactly. It's the free market. Speaking of a free market, I am going to be taking this for free. And Ian takes one of the books and cracks it open. <laughs> oh, oh, a library. <laughs> Ooh, I've got a couple of mine. Only the first two in the series, though. They have the, they have the complete collection of Ballast McGee's work. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I have something I have to busy myself with. No, 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 Marcus. We were talking about cheering up and enjoying a, a brighter life. And Ian throws her arm around you and leads you back. See, there's a very easy solution when things get you down like this. She uh, kicks the bottom of the bookshelf, making most of the books fall on the floor. There you go. Now just step all the fuck all over them. I was actually thinking about cheering up over a bonfire of sorts. Well, you you knocked over a shelf there. Either works. I mean, Gregor, these are picked those up. <laughs> Gregor, that's just the, one of the consequences of squatting. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's These are profane materials. Uh -huh. I mean, honestly, I'd count your work amongst profane materials, but I think you <laughs> like it that way, don't you, you weirdo? Yeah, you got me. Marcus stomps all over Ballast McGee's collected bibliography real fast. <laughs> oh, you're stepping on... You're stepping on... Marcus, you're He's stepping... my rival, Gregor! You're, you're accidentally stepping on these books. <laughs> And my fingers sometimes. I sure am. Well, you should probably stop trying to pick the books up then, shouldn't you? No, it doesn't really hurt. And we're good. And Ian just sits there and watches. You know, I really like hanging out with you guys. We should do this more often. We yeah. should. We make like, a pretty good team. We make a good team and we hit up like yeah. all of my basic needs. Things get broken. Um, There was, I, I had plenty of time to read and just relax. No high stakes, no combat, no nothing. Just... Just general wanton destruction of property and hanging out. That's what I'm about at my car. It's what I'm about. I hear that. I could go for some combat. Speaking of, where's Ash? And as a uh, funny coincidence, this exact moment uh, that these three stalwart guards were, uh, let's say, exploring the uh, <laughs> all of the library had to offer, 
Twelve masked individuals entered the city of Jinkala, unbeknownst to literally anyone. Looks like we better get to it. Gregor <laughs> stretches out and begins squatting. Gregor, really? Oh, right here? Marcus You're going to do that right here? Well, yeah. Where else would I do it? Why? You can't just... Okay, Gregor, I need to explain some things. Yes, we are squatting, but we're... Gregor, you can't squat here. What? No, I'm just exercising my squatter's rights. You motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> 